Okay, so now I'm going to take you into the actual data import manager. So let's click on start, programs, Spork server, data import manager. If you were creating a SQL import, obviously you can click on new at that stage. At this stage, I'm going to go to new on the Excel imports. Now remember, this is just the main CI information. This is not holding the extended yet. So we're going to create two separate imports. This one now is for the main CI. I'm going to click on OK. So now it's asking for the file name. So I'm just going to select my import.xls. And I've got several tabs. So I'm just going to click on the config item. At this stage, you'd want to click on query sample. So this is brought through all of the column heading names and some preview just to see which, which ones actually contain the information. So I'm just going to tick each of the ones that I do want to bring through. So again, I'm just bringing through some of the mandatory, mandatory information rather than going into depth into each particular one, but I'll have to check the schema report for that. So I've checked each single one that I need. I'm now going to go on to the target value mapping page. And if you select SW data, you'll need to click on it twice just to make that table appear. So now we're not going straight into the config item my table. We're going into the CMDB stage. There we go. CMDB stage. So you can keep the unique key, this unique key the same. It's always going to be the CK config item. Now you can see a list of columns. Now this should match exactly what your config item my table should look like. If it doesn't, make sure it does before you do the import otherwise certain information wouldn't come across so now what I'm going to do is tick each of the relevant areas so let's say for example config itemized there we go and insert on each stage here so you can see config type we've got CMDB status in there let's keep going down is active baseline. What else have we got? Is unavailable. I think I missed out description. FK status level. And I think that's all of them. You can also just click on the check syntax option here. It just shows you for each record a preview of what is actually going to come in. So one thing also to remember this at this stage is you can actually complete other items here. So it doesn't need to be on your spreadsheet. However, if there's some particular column which is always going to be the same, there's no need to enter it on your spreadsheet. Let's say for the actual company name if you wanted to tick that you could simply type in text and on my particular one is test org and just remember when you're doing this obviously just make sure that the FK column is also populated there's an FK column for the company name so it's FK company ID again if you don't know what these are you may wish to run a simple query against your database just to make sure you are aware. So now that's configured, you can keep these the same, allow both inserts and updates. Remember, if there's anything in your current staging area, you may wish to remove that first. If you wanted to get clever with the pre-import and post-import SQL, you can be more than happy to, to do that there. and also using advanced JavaScript options. So I'm not going to go through this today on this particular tutorial. Uh, this is just a simple import. So I'm going to go to run import now. You can see that it's inserted three. So remember, that's not going straight into the CIs. These won't be searchable right now, but it's going into the staging area. So if I minimize this, and now we're going to staging. So if we're going to manage CMDB and then configuration items, if I click on search, you'll see that no CIs appear, which is correct. 
Now in the left hand side here we've got manage stage items so I'm going to click on that then click on search again so here's our three assets so it's managed to come through to this staging area now the reason for this staging area is if you're importing several perhaps hundreds or even thousands of CIs here you can actually do a quick comparison you can have a quick look at it and there may be some CIs that you might want to decline so let's say asset 3 I don't want that you can click on decline in the bottom side there and click on selected items it'll ask you for a particular reason uh, mistake apply rejection it will disappear from your list so that's a handy way just to see that if you especially especially if you've got some form of asset discovery tool and you're picking up a lot of information from your network and it's pulling through some CIs that you don't necessarily want in your CMDB perhaps this has not been picked up for your import but through here it's just this extra layer just to make sure that you don't get several hundreds of thousands of CIs that you don't necessarily need. So now we've found these two and we're happy for these two to go into staging. What I'm going to do is in the top right hand side here we've got determine import actions. If I click on that it will come up with a prompt saying are you sure you want to do this? I'm going to say yep. Now what this does is it runs a process in the background. It's going to compare our CIs against what's currently in the staging sorry what's currently in the main CI table if it sees matches so it could find CI's that's in the database but it needs to update it then it will tell us in the search criteria that it needs to update it it's going to say process complete so you can say it's completed here number records process 2 fantastic so if I click on search again now you can see these three columns here populated saying what import action it's going to take it's going to create at this stage new type needed no so that means that it's found this hardware desktop type already so if you typed it wrong into your spreadsheet or perhaps it was wrong in your import remember you can do that manually then it will come up here saying you do actually need a new type because there's no such a type as hardware desktop so what I'm going to do at this stage now is I'm just going to import this selected item. So say completed. Now it's left with one more left. Import selected item. Completed. So now they're both showing as completed. If I close down this particular box and search based on the main CMDB, you can see our assets are in there. So let's go into them. So you can see each area where we've actually populated the the main mandatory information. One handy thing that you may wish to do at this stage is, let's say you did want the inventory ID to come through, or site, location. What you may wish to do is just go into the paintbrush area. What this will allow you to do is it will actually access the form designer and for each particular field you can see the actual column names. Again, I'll be updating um, the actual YouTube comments to say where you can get a hold of a PDF or Word document which shows the actual column names for each one of these particular fields. So that'll be quite handy. So now that's completed, you've got your CIs in there. So the next thing that you might want to think about is how often you want to come get this information in there. It might be a one-off import or it also might be a SQL database that you might want to import on a regular basis so if you've got your system here you've got into your data import itself and there's a section here to actually schedule this import so you can schedule this as much as you like um, if you've if it's querying quite a lot of CIs you may wish to do it out of hours and then that will make sure that your CIs are always up to date one thing you do need to make sure of doing is that you're processing the staging area regularly so that it can update the actual main CIs rather than just staging. So that's a simple hardware CI import. Um, what we're going to do next is I'm going to do the extended details and you'll see that what will happen is another tab will appear here to show the actual extended information for this particular CI and we can store things like model and make 
So I'm just going to pause the video just while we set this up. This was the end of part 2. In part 3 we're going to be looking at importing some extended information.